Hey everybody, welcome back to Banjo Quest. I hope you're doing well. It's been a little bit since I've released a video because last week we were doing the Sawmill Survival School, but I'm back, I'm ready to go, and today we're going to talk about the pull-off. Now, this pull-off thing, what is it? The pull-off, I hate the word pull-off. It makes me think off. It makes me think, get the fingers off the banjo. And I think a lot of people internalize that off part of the pull off and they pull away from the instrument. Today, I want to show you my mechanics for getting really big sounding pull offs by pulling through. And we're going to call it today, the pull through. Now we're not going to change this technique, it's still a pull off, but I want you to use the word through in your own playing to invoke a certain behavior of your pulling hand. The pull-off is one of the most powerful and beautiful techniques that we can use to generate eighth notes on the five-string banjo. And one of the reasons it's so powerful is because the banjo is usually tuned to an open tuning, which means we have a lot of open strings at a given moment. And pulling off to open strings is one of those things that I think plays to the instrument's strengths. The more fingers you get down on the board, yes, you can make all those fancy chord shapes up the neck and they're beautiful and wonderful and they give you a lot of flexibility. But when I wanna sound my most banjo-y, banjo -y, I don't know, that's a word, I wanna pull off and activate open strings. That to me is playing to the heart and soul of the instrument. So the first way we're going to learn how to do a pull off well is we're going to pull off on the first string. I'm in double C tuning. I'm going to put my first finger on the second fret of the first string into my C shape chord or the one. Nice and comfortable. I'm in fairly deep into the hand, but I'm not too deep where my hand is touching the outer line of the banjo. I've got a little air between my palm and that outside line of the neck and I wrap my fingers over comfortably. I'm not putting a ton of pressure on. I throw my hand down into the banjo and on my upstroke of my right hand, I'm pulling off and into the palm of my left hand. So I'm, I'm plucking the string with my left hand. See the timing there? I have a right hand throw and then on the upstroke, this is really critical, on the upstroke, I perform the pull-off. Now let's talk about the mechanics of the pull-off specifically. I think of the pull-off kind of like I think of my striking hand technique. With my striking hand, I am throwing into the banjo and I am striking a string and breaking the surface and traveling to a target beyond. In this case, it's the head. I think of that same kind of mechanic as happening with my fretting hand as well, except I'm doing it on a different axis of attack. So I'm not going into the banjo, but I'm pulling through towards my palm and I am clearing that first string to get a nice sharp tone. Really that pull off tone and volume should be, you should be able to make it as loud as the notes from your right hand. So if you're feeling like your pull offs are quiet, you need to investigate your technique and make sure you're pulling through. Now, what is pull through versus pull off? One of the things I see a lot is this desire to pull up and out into space. And we get sort of the flying fingers problem. And you've probably seen this, if not in your own playing, somebody else you know does this where the fingers are working super hard on the fretting hand. What the pull through does is it changes your attack. So you're pulling into your palm from the palm. It's not a finger motion so much as it is an activation of the whole hand. And I'm pulling straight into the palm and my fingers remain fairly close. This is gonna be blurry, I apologize. Fairly close to the strings. The more you can stay close to the strings, the more you can float above this, those strings, the more efficient your fretting style is going to be. Now let's take this idea and play it in a pattern. So we've got a simple pattern. We're going to do a pull off ditty and the ditty will be on the second and fifth strings, nice and slow. Faster. And let's get this cooking. Oh, 
Okay, so that's easy enough. What about what happens when we move to an inner string? Let's take a look at that. All right, for this exercise, we're going to be pulling off the third string second fret. So we're gonna plant the index finger, third string, second fret. We're gonna be light, not too hard. And what we're going to do is we're still gonna invoke that pull through idea. But this time, we are going to dead end ourselves into the open second string. So we'll do a downstroke. On the upstroke, we're pulling through towards the palm and we're letting that second open string sort of catch our motion, catch our follow through from the pull off. And then our next stroke is just simply going to be a ditty on the open second string. Faster. And faster. Yes, even at that speed, my finger is pulling through the third string and it's being caught by the open second string. What does this remind you of? It should remind you that when we're playing with our right hand, we're punching through on the inner strings. Let's say the third string. We throw into the third string. Resonate that third string, push through to a target beyond. Guess what's happening? Happening? Happening. Guess what's happening? The open second string is catching that throw. Just like the open second string catches the pull through with the left hand. This is sort of this amazing symmetry of mechanics that are happening with the striking hand and your fretting hand. And it's a good way to sort of remind yourself what needs to be happening up here. I think it's very easy to think of the striking hand and the fretting hand as two very different tasks that are doing different things. But they're kind of, once you drill down into them, they share a lot of commonalities and mechanical behaviors between hands. So these are simple ways to make sure that your pull-off is big, loud, and full. When I think back to my early playing, I just kind of assumed that my pull-offs, my hammer-ons, and my slides were all going to sort of sound diminished, weak, and anemic because it was a shortcoming of either my technique that I wasn't gonna think much about or it was a shortcoming of the banjo. But later I found out that those shortcomings were simply put in place by me and my own inability to understand what was going on. Now, when I see a left-hand technique, when I do a left-hand technique, I'm trying to make as much tone as I possibly can. And at this point, I can get volume just as loud up here as I can get it down with my striking hand. So if you're finding that your pull-offs are sounding anemic, these ideas might help you pull through towards the palm and make sure you have good follow through without sort of wild flying fingers all over the place. Now the last piece and probably the most important piece is just to remind you, this is an eighth note generating pattern and those eighth notes need to be true. So if I were to count with this pattern, delete the left hand activity, guess what we get? There it is again. Brush away the leaves. What's underneath? It's that darn bum ditty. Better learn it, better be good at it because it underpins everything. So if you're struggling with this stuff, get the bum ditty sorted and then add the fretting hand later. All right, that does it for me today. Hope you found that useful. If you want more of this kind of material, head on over to Patreon where I have a ton of stuff. I do a lot more over there than I do here. And I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.